Hey everybody, it's Ben here. I am in my garage. I've got my laptop. I've got lithium batteries in the back of this factory built 1998 Ford Ranger pickup truck. And I just got the laptop to communicate with the lithium batteries. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I've already test driven this truck and I could get over a hundred miles per charge on it. Uh, however, the instrumentation in the truck is pretty limited. It's got a really simple dashboard. One nice thing though with the truck is that I do have the computer that works with it, plugs into the ODB2 port and it can tell me some things like uh, my total pack voltage. But this system was designed for lead acid batteries. Pretty simple, whereas with the lithium batteries, um, we need some sort of a BMS. We need some sort of a system that manages, that balances all the cells. Now, fortunately, that's actually built into the batteries. Now, I do have here uh, a box that I pulled out of the Smith Electric Truck battery box. Uh, it says BMS on here. It's not really the BMS. It's really... Um, an interface that connects between all the batteries and then out to something else like the battery charger. So for example, this would be able to pull information from the BMSs that are built into the batteries and then say, aha, this one's fully charged. Now let's turn off the battery charger, for example. But the actual balancing and everything like that is done right inside the battery. So I wanna show you um, what I did to make this all work together. Um, you know me, uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily super smart with a lot of things, but I like to learn, I like to figure things out, and I've been kind of learning about um, electronic communications and that sort of thing. A uh, big thank you to Eric for giving me a hand getting started in this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on in close. Um, I'll show you what I did, hopefully in enough detail so you can figure out how to do it. Uh, if you're already experienced with all the computer communications things, great, you're way ahead of me. If not, come along for the ride. So let's start off by taking a look at these batteries. Now, of course, there's the main power connectors that uh, you know conduct the electricity from one battery to the next. But the other thing is we've got these. And this is the communications plug. Uh, there's two of these per battery, and they daisy chain together one to the next to the next. Um, if we look really close, we can see it says Tyco Amp. So uh, it's this amp super seal connector. It's got a nice waterproof connection on here. These are uh, weatherproof, automotive grade, good connectors. They lock together. Uh, this is a five pin connector. That's what the female looks like. And over here, that's what the male looks like. And they're just daisy chained one to the next to the next, uh, just like hooking together uh, the batteries for power in a, a serial connection. Uh, the other thing is at the very end of the string, uh, there's a terminator on here, and that's gonna have uh, some sort of a resistor on the inside, and actually if we, so if, if we pull that uh, terminator off, uh, it's a little hard to see, but there's two pins inside there, and I can actually put my multimeter on there, and find out that it appears to be a 120 ohm resistor. So what we're gonna do is instead of going to this unit here, uh, we're gonna take the connection from the very last battery on the, the positive end here, and we're gonna take it and bring it up to the laptop computer. Now, of course, I don't have this port on the computer. I do, however, have a USB port. So what I did is I got a little generic adapter doohickey here. And this is a, um, it's a RS-485 to USB adapter. Here, look, I even wrote it down so I'd remember what to say. Um, but uh, this one uses an FTDI chip, which is apparently super common. And I just made a, a little adapter. Um, I mail ordered some of these matching connectors right here. So I figured I'd probably use some for some other projects anyways. So I got a little kit full of them here. And this one even came with a bunch of fuses and things, but it's got two pin, three pin, four pin, five pin, and six pin. So if I ever wanna make a wiring harness in the future, I am all set. So I took one of these, I used a couple of scrap wires, terminated them all in here, and then ran them over to here. Now, USB, remember, is five volts. So the outside two pins right here, those are five volts, and the 
inner two pins, that's the communications. So what we'll do is we will plug this into the laptop. So all I'm doing here now is uh, plugging in the communications cable from the computer to the batteries. Remember, there's 26 of these batteries in a string. So a couple things that are a little funny about this. Uh, the software that I need to run with the Valence is PC only and I only have a Macintosh laptop. So what I did is I, oh shoot, where'd it go? <laughs> um, I downloaded some software. I got something called VirtualBox. And what VirtualBox does is it lets you run other operating systems. Um, you know, a, a, a virtual operating system. Um, I played around with it a bit. Um, I tried using Windows 7 at first, had some issues with it, did not work properly for me. Um, used Windows 10, I was able to get the software to work, but then I had some issues with the communication. So the real trick with this was to make sure that um, I had the right USB stuff set up and the right driver, the right permissions, um, it got kind of complicated quick, but in settings here, under ports, the main thing was uh, USB, making sure it's got the USB 1.1 FTDI FT232R USB UART driver all set up and good to go on there. Um, and then with that and Windows 10, then I could start, I could run Windows 10 on my Macintosh laptop here. Um, if you already have a PC, you can skip all this. Okay, so we finally got Windows 10 to load up and inside we have the Valence U-Charge battery Diag software. So let's open that up. And then the other thing we can do too is uh, maximize our virtual Windows 10. Uh, so it just looks like we're actually running the operating system. Makes cleans up the background a little bit for you. So let's take a look here. Um, this is the software, and when you first open it up, there's really you know, no data being displayed or anything uh, like that in there. Um, the first time I was able to get this open and get it to run, where it says COM port here was blank, and if you tried to do anything, it just said, you know, sorry, port error, that sort of thing. So uh, what I had to do was manually type in COM3 and hit enter. Um, after I got it to run and everything and I would close out the software when I would open it again It would default and it would have com3 in there already, but uh, you know I'm used to software where it knows what ports to use and there's a drop down and you just use it but um, so we're using com3 The other thing is some of the features you need to have a logging path or it'll give you an error So I already set up a logging path um, pretty easy you know, just hit browse and tell it where you want it. I just put it on the desktop, so it's actually in this uh, logging folder over here on the desktop. But now we can actually do some things. So the main thing is, let's look up under communications, it says module ID, and that's actually, hey, what battery do you want to talk to? Now we're connected to a string of 26 of them, and if we pop this up, we get one through 128, now obviously we don't have 128 batteries in here, but let's just go with, I don't know, let's say battery seven. And then we hit start read, and it should communicate with that battery with the ID of seven. And sure enough, we get some information starts popping up here. Um, on the left, here's kind of an important one, voltages. So because there's four banks of cells in series, it tells you uh, the, the voltage of each of the four in series, and it's at about 3.3 volts. Um, the four of them aren't perfectly together, but they're within, oh gosh, one, um, one one hundredth of each other. Uh, so very, very close, and obviously that's what you want for a lithium system. Also gives us some information like the serial number, uh, firmware revision, firmware date, um, we don't have any errors. Um, how much current is going through the battery? Uh, the state of charge, which is at about two-thirds the state of charge. Um, there's some temperature information. Uh, this is in Celsius. All the batteries are right around uh, 20 degrees Celsius or centigrade right now. It's pretty much 70 degrees Fahrenheit uh, where I am at this moment. So let's take a look at some other things here. We've got an event log where we can track some uh, different information. Uh, one that's kind of interesting is down here, the 
uh, charge discharge cycle count. Uh, this battery is 246 cycles, which is really not a lot for batteries that are rated for uh, thousands of cycles. And let me see if I can remember which, there was one that was like real super nice and low too. Okay, battery module 25 only has 24 cycles on it. I mean, that's basically a brand new battery. That battery has barely been used. Uh, so it's kind of cool to start pulling up some information uh, on the batteries. Uh, another thing that's kind of cool, we can go to battery system info, and that's going to show us some general information about the entire string of batteries. So um, I have to stop reading. And when I do that, then I can do a scan. And that's going to scan through all the batteries that are connected. And I see module numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, they, they just go up. And it says it found 25 modules. Well, okay, but I, I know I've got 26 batteries in here. A little weird. And sure enough, they go one through 25. Um, well, uh, originally I had one through 24, but I fixed this yesterday and once I figured this out. The trick is um, the batteries have a module ID, so they kind of need to know where in line they are. Uh, so what's interesting about this is in the Smith battery pack, it was a string of 24 batteries. There were two, 20, two 24 packs of batteries on those trucks. So each of those, um, those BMS interface units, each one was connected to 24 batteries. So the batteries that are in here, two of the batteries are actually repeats. It was ID number three and ID number four. And any of the ones that had like a repeated ID number, it just skips. It just doesn't recognize that it's there. Uh, so I found uh, two battery number threes and I went in and I said, okay, battery number three, that's gonna be battery 25. And then when I scanned it again, um, it showed up as 25 instead of 24 batteries. So let's go back in close. We'll see if we can do the same thing with that other battery. Okay, well, this is a little weird. Um, I just spent a few minutes trying to troubleshoot this. Um, what I did was I took my module four and I renamed it to module 26. So if we look in the list here, we can see uh, 25 and 26 were the modules that I renamed. And for that module four being renamed to 26, this is the same as what I did three to 25, but uh, module four is still not showing up in here. I did the exact same thing on that module as I did with the other, but it's acting different. I don't know why. Um, I also checked the serial numbers. I don't see the serial number of that battery showing up anywhere. Go figure. Um, who knows? Why is it doing that? I don't know. Um, I'll probably figure out eventually. Um, here's another thing that's interesting with the software is up here, um, there's a locate battery feature and you just select a module ID and hit locate battery. And what it does is it just tells you, hey, uh, basically what type of battery it is. And that, that's really it. That's all it tells you. I was originally hoping that it would flash the light or something like that. Um, because on all these batteries, they do have um, a little LED that's used as a, you know, it's used as an indicator. Um, and I thought maybe it would make that one light blink like crazy so you could physically know which battery it is. But no, it does not work like that. So that locate battery seems um, a little useless. So I'm excited that I can communicate with the batteries, but at the same time with the truck just sitting here, it doesn't really tell me all that much. Um, but I think if I drive around with the laptop communicating, um, that's where I'm gonna find some really interesting information, uh, especially using the logging feature, because come on, frankly, it's hard to drive, pay attention to the road, and look at what some batteries are doing. Um, I might try to uh, record some video and sync uh, the logging to the real world so I can know, hey, I'm pulling this much current when I'm accelerating uh, up Main Street or um, I'm regenerating this much when I'm, um, I'm braking at that four-way stop sign, that sort of a thing. Um, I should be able to reach up into the cab with extension cord, so that should work out fine. So again, the main thing with this is uh, getting the software, um, getting a, uh, an RS-485 adapter, um, just a basic little USB one here. You can just mail order those. I think that was like 
$15 or something like that. And then uh, building your little adapter to go to the amp, uh, the Tyco amp super seal. Um, that's all you need there, straight through wiring, pretty, pretty forward. Um, if you need help, just follow the diagram. It also seemed like it didn't matter whether this uh, 120 ohm resistor was terminating the series or not. So uh, don't have any worries about that either. So that's pretty much it for now. I do hope you like these videos. Uh, comment, share, like, subscribe. Uh, check out the blog over at 300mpg.org. Uh, I love getting your input and hopefully we got other people using some of these batteries out there. I think they're absolutely ideal for 48 volt solar power backup systems. And I'd really like to be able to work with the software and get this all set up to make kind of a turnkey system for uh, folks to be able to just take a bunch of these batteries and boom, put them in. Uh, and use them just like you would lead acid batteries for solar backup, only with a lot more capacity, a lot more flexibility uh, than you'd ever have with lead acid. So until next time, stay charged up. And when you're actively communicating over this uh, little USB adapter, there's some LEDs in there um, that are flashing just to show that, hey, yep, you're communicating. <laughs>